Okay, you ready? Right, okay, so. Um, so basically, I'm just going to run through every, like a, a very brief, well, I guess a, a tutorial featuring the main aspects of the model. There's quite a few things I've missed, but um, I guess you, once you've got these basic things, you, you can pick up with them, with them later. So I've called an introduction to simulating optoelectronic devices with GPVDM. And we're going to look at organic solar cells, perovskites, um, OFETs, OLEDs, and both in time domain and steady state. So this is an overview of, um, my, of, of what we're going to look at today. Um, and we'll talk about what is GPVDM and the theoretical overview. Oh, incidentally, if, if you want to stop me, if you want to ask questions, just, just shout. I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, you know, do this, um, uh, you know, as like a question and answer session. If you want me to go off on a tangent, I'm very happy to. And, uh, and if, I, if I'm speaking too quickly, just tell me to slow down. Or if you can't hear me, tell me to slow down. Okay? Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the theoretical background of the model. Then I'm going to talk about installing it. Then we're going to look at running simple simulations, changing electrical parameters, doing optical simulations, a materials database. And I will look at uh, making your own materials because one question I get asked a lot is um, how, to, um, how to make your own materials to go in the database. I'm going to look at uh, perovskite solar cells and sort of time domain simulations. Um, that's, that's a new thing. I actually put that in following some discussions with Carsten. I've not really had any more time to do much on that due to teaching commitments, but I'm hoping to come back to that over Easter. OFET simulations and finite difference modeling, ed editing the device structure using the layer um, editor, meshing um, OLEDs, and then a few closing remarks. So what is GPV GPVDM? It's basically a 1D um, or 2D, depending on how you want to look at it, optoelectronic device model and it can simulate solar cells, LEDs, diodes, and FETs. So any, any structures, one or two D it can do. It, there's also, it, it could do 3D quite easily, but I've just not put that in there. In principle, it solves the drift diffusion equations using the finite difference method. Um, it, and it solves the optical um, equations, so sort of um, propagation of light within the device using either ray tracing, if you want to use ray tracing, or it can use something that's, it's, it's sort of like the transfer matrix method, but it's, it's, I've done it so it's a bit faster. It's sort of the same maths, but I've just sort of done it in a, in a, in a, quick, in a quicker way. Um, that's, yeah, so very quick theoretical overview. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details at all, but these are effectively the drift diffusion equations. So we've got Gauss's law, electron hole, um, driving equation, so electrons flow as a function of both, I guess, um, potential and gradient, and the same with holes. Then we've got the hole and electron continuity. Um, it's got recombination, trapping, and sort of terms in there effectively. And, and with respect to this, the model is very similar to many other device models, so it's, sort of, it's, you know, it's bog standard in, 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 in that regard. Um, what is special, so where most other models then, then go is when they include the shockley reed hall um, recombination and trapping equations, they, they effectively, they do the derivation um, for, for the equations of shockley reed hall So they assume a trap state and they assume carriers trapping into them, carriers detrapping from them. And then once the carriers are in these trap states, they can recombine with, say, if a hole goes into that trap state, it'll recombine with an electron. And then you solve these in this sort of steady state way and you come up with this equation in effect. But the issue is that when, you, when traps dominate your device, like in these third, third gen materials, um, uh, uh, that sort of trapping becomes very, very important and the charge in the trap states becomes very important. Um, so you don't sort of want to just have it as a single equation. You really want to actually have the trap charge in a state so it can affect the electric field. And also, the key thing about this equation is its steady state is not time domain. So it, it can't sort of do dynamic trapping and detrapping into the trap state. So um, this really isn't suitable if you want to do time domain simulations and have a high density of basically trap states. So the approach I, I took with GP, GP, PVDM is instead of um, sort of d arriving at this equation analytically, I sort of stopped before you derive that equation and I said, okay, um, let's have a rate equation in each. So on, on the right, this picture here, we've got the green is the um, conduction band, basically. The, um, the, 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 the purple are, the, uh, are the, the holes. And then the blue is the, the exponential tail of trapped states, so trapped holes. And the red is the exponential tail of ele electron states. And I said for each one of these, these states, basically, we, we write 
a capture and escape equation. So we have electrons coming into it, holes, uh, electrons escaping, and then recombination happens through holes getting trapped into it or ho ho holes escaping. And so we're basically are solving one of these equations explicitly for each energy step. So each one of those bars we solve an equation, a capture escape equation for. And what this enables us to do is basically do shock could read hull, but out of equilibrium. So sort of, you know, we can do, drive the model way out of equilibrium and it all still holds. And we can look at sort of things like, you know, modeling detrapping of carriers over time when you need, for example, to model a, a TOF transit and things like that. Um, other models don't do that. So that's the key thing about this. And what this enables us to do is effectively resolve in, um, in position and energy space, exactly where the electrons and holes are at any place in, in the device. So this is key, you know, any, any time or voltage, we know exactly where any electron or hole is in the device.